Associations such as ASEAN play a pivotal role in these security affairs. ASEAN and other multi-nation forums such as Shangri-La Dialogue provide opportunities for nations to frame the challenges, seek common and effective approaches to them, and conduct respectful discourse when nations disagree. Last year at Shangri-La, the United States Secretary of Defense, Bob Gates, reiterated the importance of broad dedication to principles essential to peace, prosperity, and stability. Principles that include commitment to free and open commerce, international order and rule of law, and to resolve conflict without the use of force. He wisely stated that pursuing our common interests has increased our common security, that confronting these threats is not the task of any one nation acting alone, and commitment to these principles are the key to the region's continued prosperity. There has been a question about whether or not after the subprime crisis, the slow growth of economy of the world, of whether uh, there would be still the same commitment of the Pacific Fleet and Pacific Command, this kind of area. But if I link that to issues arising in this region, you still have North Asia to look at. You still have a lot of uh, operations in Iraq and Afghanistan that you have to support as, a, as an army unit. And uh, how do you aggregate resources in that sense and importance. I do know that you say that you know, the US Pacific uh, PACOM and Pacific Fleet, they don't share much information on that respect. It's understandable. But if you can give a, a, maybe a, a macro picture of how do you move these chess pieces if this is a chess board. Yeah, thank you. I think it's a very good question. And uh, we call that posture. So this is how US Pacific Command postures itself in the region in order to provide the securities that it does. And the security is, is broad, as you suggest. 34 nations that we're interacting with, more or less, uh, military to military, and large expanses of area that we have uh, you know, responsibility for. Uh, Northeast Asia, as you suggested, Southeast Asia, Oceania, and South Asia. Um, so this is from the west coast of the United States to a dividing line between India, Pakistan, half the earth. Uh, Pacific Command is robust. We have 330,000 uh, individuals that are, that are uh, providing this work. And all of the United, you know, literally half of the United States Armed Forces uh, in, fl in uh, locations uh, on the mainland, uh, but as well in, uh, in Hawaii, in Guam, uh, laid down in Japan, and on the uh, Korean Peninsula. A small number of uh, individual uh, units that are uh, located in Singapore. Um, how do we do this? Um, this is a responsibility to bias the forces where they're needed. So for example, uh, the South China Sea requires that we deploy and sustain the forces that uh, are operating there on a routine basis. So uh, across that 330,000 man uh, U.S. Pacific Command and all of the uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Special Forces equipage that's associated with it, uh, my responsibility is to uh, deploy it on a ro rotational basis throughout the region in order to cover the commitments that we have. Mm -hmm. over 400 exercises a year with our counterpart nations, and uh, a routine forward presence that provides deterrence and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and other benefits. It's so easy to see you as a bureaucrat. You, know, you have to manage so many layers until, until the, right at the very bottom. But you have gone and risen up through the ranks. You've managed this uh, Pacific fleet before. So what kind of valuable insight that has given you, apart from maybe knowing Malaysia for what it is at the crossroad of East and West, it, the, the small things that make the decisions of now that you have to do yeah, easier? The, well, the first time that I uh, sailed into the Western Pacific and to visit um, Asian nations, I was 19 years old. Okay. So I have a, a, a career that spans now 39 years where the operational portion of it has been uh, by and large in the Pacific. And I have great regard and fascination actually for the Asia Pacific region for all its complexities. The histories associated with this region of the world, 
uh, the historical animosities, the relationships, the, the growth of, of uh, institutions like ASEAN that have become very uh, uh, um, influential, I think, you know, throughout uh, not only the region but the world. So, so I've seen a great evolution occur here, and uh, I've had the benefit of, of uh, both living out here and working out here uh, for most of my adult life. Um, I think that Asia is worth the attention and worth our time to endeavor to understand those complexities in order to be effective in working out here. It's helped me to this point. Uh, we're, I'm just operating at a different level now, mm -hmm. but yes. nonetheless, many of those uh, principles and values remain the same. I would like to link a few points here in one question. Uh, I've always wondered, you know, we see how the, the land army, they have evolved so much because it's not the traditional nation-to-nation -nation conflicts anymore. Terrorism has seen to that, you know, there's more urban warfare emphasis, for example, fighting close combat quarters in buildings. But for the Navy, how do we see that? Because we do also see, like you have mentioned in the presentation about uh, the pirates of Somalia. And uh, for this region, we always have a headache of how do we ensure uh, security across the maybe 400 kilometer of coastline in the uh, Straits of Malacca alone, not to mention the Sabah side bordering Philippines and all that. So if I can tap into your vast knowledge and expertise, how would you suggest that we do that in this day and age? Yeah, that's a, it's a, a ranking question that we have wrestled with uh, a lot. The Asia Pacific region is inherently a maritime region. When we consider the expanse of the Pacific Ocean, the expanse of the uh, Indian Ocean, the dozen choke points that are uh, part of this region, the crisscrossing sea lanes in uh, vast expanses like the South China Sea, and the time distance factors to get there. Uh, I think part of the answer to your question is uh, the partnering among uh, the navies of the region. Uh, this is not something that one nation, even one that is as uh, resource sufficient as the United States, mm -hmm. can do by itself. So this is very much about uh, the allies and partners that we enjoy in the region, uh, the regional relationships that exist, and the investment that needs to be made in that maritime domain, both to characterize it and to be able to be present on it. If, if all of our commerce, more than $5 trillion of regional commerce, rides on those sea, lines, sea lanes every, every year, um, then uh, the contribution of, of armies to that, to that protection is limited. The contributions of navies to that protection and to some extent air forces to that protection is paramount. So I think part of this is understanding the expansiveness of that domain that's out of sight mm -hmm. and often out of mind uh, and what it really takes to be able to guard it because guarding it is the future of the Asia Pacific. I'd like to push the time limit a bit here we ending with one question about, at the end of the day, it's about perception, and perception is based a lot on the people down on the streets, for example, the laymen. And uh, because you have this previous experience uh, for the movie Top Gun, popular culture is sometimes a lot more effective than any visit of any st uh, head of state. And uh, if you can only see the joy on the faces of a lot of kids when they hear that there's going to be a U.S. A Navy ship docking at uh, Port Klang, for example. And, uh, but at the same time, we see this demonstration after uh, Friday prayers in front of the U.S. Embassy, which your counterpart here might be able to inform you. So there's this uh, complexity, but whenever they go and see a movie, they are very united. So I think there should be a new movie advised by you about the Pacific and about the changing dynamics of uh, uh, Asia Pacific, for example. Well, I think to your point, um, it would serve America well to better understand the Asia Pacific. And, uh, and I think that uh, much social media, whether it's movies or other social media, all contribute to that. So the messaging the social messaging uh, that is occurring here, uh, I think is, is, to your point, very, very important for young people, 
uh, the next generations that are going to be responsible for all uh, that the, the Asia Pacific uh, grows into in the 21st century. Um, that, again, wonderful uh, comment. Top Gun was a long time ago, yes. but the new uh, really movie just, genres are, uh, are worth uh, investing in. I Let's think. see whether we're going to have a Pandora of Asia Pacific soon. Thank you so much, uh, Admiral Bob Willard, Thank for you. making time. It. Thanks to you for watching Seluruh Pandan. Terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih kepada ASEAN ISIS dan ISIS Malaysia. Kita jumpa lagi dalam episod Seluruh Pandan yang lain. Sekian. Selamat malam dan terima kasih. Thank you so much. Thank Such you. a pleasure. Thank you.